All right. Praise God. Jesus bless this message. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You guys, I'm in Virginia on the East Coast, so we're going to get some severe storms tonight. We're supposed to get level three to five, um, which is pretty severe. High winds up to 70 miles per hour. So we may lose power. I don't know for how long. Maybe a couple days. I don't know. So I'm preparing today, right now. It's supposed to come in later on this evening. I'm going to be popping lessons out throughout the day. Video now. And then when this uploads, I'm going to do another video in place of tomorrow. And maybe even another video in place of the next day. In case I don't have power and can't do it. Um, if you see me upload two or three videos, do the first one. This one is the first one today. Do the next one tomorrow. Okay? Because... I want to keep y'all busy every day, so I'm just like setting it ahead in case we don't have power for the next couple days, okay? Don't forget to register your kids, um, your teenagers, teenagers, um, for the Vacation Bible School that starts this coming Saturday, okay? We've already posted the link. Shanoa's posted it on JesusDoers.com. On the homepage, you'll see where it's got the teenager Vacation Bible School. That's the link right there that they'll use to go straight on into the barn. It's not the same room that we use at Google Meets. It's another Google Meet room. So you got to go with that link. You have to have the Google Chrome app downloaded because it's Google link, Google Meets. It's Google Chrome app. You got to use Google. And uh, your kids will come in there at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you haven't got your screw tape, the letters study guide, it's a gray looking book, but you'll see a little demon at the desk you know, he's the one that's attacking your kids. That's the book. You need to go ahead and get it. You need to get it right now. Okay, it's like 11 bucks on Amazon. Go ahead and get that ordered so that your kids can follow along. And you need to, if you're, if you, uh, if you have any questions or anything, you need to go to JesusDoers.com and email Shanoa Flores. Ask her whatever questions she'll get back with you as soon as possible. Now, she also is under this storm we're having. So if you don't hear anything back today or tomorrow, it's because we don't have power. But go ahead and send your questions or whatever. We may be able to answer it right away. Okay, but we got to look out for these kids. All right. Last week on here, all last week, we were talking about us living in the world and versus the spirit. Okay, and sometimes you know there's things the Holy Spirit's going to... Let me say it again. Jesus, bless this message again. In Jesus' name, I pray I plead the blood of Jesus on it. In Jesus' name. There's things when you get saved... The Holy Spirit's going to start convicting you. That's a love word. He wants to help you put this down, put that down, change this, change that to make you become more Christ-like. And sometimes we procrastinate things that we know we need to change and we procrastinate it. Proverbs 16.3 specifically tells you, commit your work to the Lord. Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. Okay procrastination, that's a happiness buster. And you know what else it is? It's a time stealer. To procrastinate what the Holy Spirit's telling you to change is going to bust up your happiness and steal time. It turns simple tasks into mountains and, and often results in inconvenience and unplanned expenses, okay? The boxes of old books that you meant to get rid of, you know, stacked up in your garage or the food you meant to cook, you know, spoils in the refrigerator, the old clothes you meant to take to Goodwill, pile up in the closet. Uh, the paint that you forgot, you know, the paint that you bought for the house. Like my husband got, get, but he's a painter. Well, let's just use an example. There's gallons of paint all over the garage. So the paint you bought for the house is still sitting in the basement procrastinating. That ain't no way to live, y'all. That's no way to live. And it don't have to be your fate, okay? It don't have to be. So I'm going to give you some tips that will help you get past the starting line so you're not sitting there procrastinating. Put this down. Number one, make a to-do list and tackle it. Make a to-do list and tackle it one item at a time, okay? Um, there's a common mistake people make by putting too much stuff on the list that they got to change. Too much. You know, so limit yourself to two or three items at a time, okay? And don't expect perfection, y'all. I'm dealing with someone right now in our church that's trying to quit smoking. And they did. They quit for eight days and then picked one back up. Well, what happens when you pick one back up? Immediately you feel like everything you've done is useless. You trashed it. You blew it. Whole thing, you blew it. Of course you feel that way. 
But I said, look at what the good of it is, man. You went eight days. Praise God. You went eight days, man. That shows you, you can do it. So what do you do when you go eight days and you pick one back up? You start over. You start again. You pick right back up where you left off and you push for nine days. You push for 10 days. You push and maybe it'll go on. You push. And if, if you're not trying to, if you fail, my goodness, you done went 12 days. So you slipped up. You get back up. The key is to get back up. Okay. But if you're gone eight days, for example, without a cigarette, that's what you're trying to quit. My goodness. That's a big mile step. That's a big milestone to go eight days. You understand? Don't throw yourself in the dirt because we're not perfect. God is teaching us to make changes. He didn't promise us we would never make a mistake along the way. So Paul said, when you do make a mistake, get back up right away. Start back over again. Get back up. Get back up. That's the trick right there. Don't put stuff off. Don't try to overload yourself with changes you got to make all at one time. So limit yourself to two or three items. Manufacture your own motivations, okay? If your task is to, to clean the barbecue grill, invite some friends over to cook out later or something. Uh, break big jobs down into manageable tasks and, and work on the smaller tasks in short intervals, okay? Paint one side of the house each Saturday for a month or something, right? Tackle it early in the morning and then go do something you enjoy. Okay, if your task is, I don't know, cleaning out the garage, break it down into sections, okay? Take it one section each Saturday or something like that or whatever day you choose, you know, every Thursday or whatever day. Just throwing a day out, just trying to give you what I'm talking about. Uh, take time to admire your accomplishment. Just like if you went eight days, wow, man. Say He's saying, yeah, I failed on the on day nine. But take time to admire the fact that you went eight days. You know? Take take a, you know, write it down in a notebook. If you're painting the house, take, you know, take a picture of the house when the painting is done. It took me a long time to get through this. And step by step, here's a picture every every Thursday that I was painting a room. But finally, here's the outcome. With that cigarette, for example. It took me eight days. I failed. Then I went 10 days and I failed. And then I went a month. And now, now I'm quit. Now I'm done, man. Write it all down. Look at your steps and your accomplishments that you made. So, of course, uh, procrastination can affect many other aspects of your life as well. Putting off, like, for example, uh, renewing your driver's license. Well, that can cost you a ticket. Do you understand what I'm saying? Trying to put that off. Putting off a physical can result in an expensive and painful illness, okay? So, add these to your list and get them done early in the day. And reward yourself, man, because you deserve it. You do? You deserve it. Our today is worth two tomorrows. Never leave that till tomorrow, which you can do today, okay? So, I want you to think about right now. What's one thing that you have put off today to do tomorrow? So I want you to write it down in your notebook and make sure when you're done with this video, you get up and you go do it. Okay? Because Satan is going to attack you. We've given you scriptures that you believe or you're in a battle, y'all. Especially those of you that are really giving your life to Jesus Christ. Just because you slip up. And smoke the cigarette on the ninth day. It does not mean you lost the battle. No, you're in a battle. And the Holy Spirit's there to help you. He's there to help you win that battle. Okay. So we talked about the world's ways. Living victorious last week. Uh, that Jesus is the victory. Um, go through last week's videos if you want to know all the scriptures. I gave you quite a few. So what is the world? Because it's the flesh against the spirit is what I'm telling you. What is the world? The world is a system or a culture that, that we grew up in, that we live in. And that, that's different. It's different depending on what part of the world you're growing up in, what culture you're growing up in, where you were born. 
Okay, and the Bible tells us in John 12, 31, that Satan is the ruler of this world. Okay, and he works through it. Now, don't forget, we have an HOA above, which is God Almighty. But underneath him is the world, and he said Satan is the ruler of this world. But does that mean you don't have help because you're in the world? That's what the Holy Spirit's for, man. Because he told you, don't be, don't do the things the world does. Because it belongs to the devil. The Spirit of God is here, in here too, to try to help those that love him. So you follow the Spirit. Okay, don't follow the ways of the world. Every single one of us, me and you, we were created to have the kind of life that Adam and Eve had in the garden. They had 100% acceptance. The highest significance. They have perfect security. But that wasn't the life that you and I was born into, was it? No. From our first breath, man, from the first breath coming out the womb, we didn't have the spiritual connection to God that we were meant to have, did we? No. We're born into sin. We're born as a sinner, okay? But yet we were created with these uh, inbuilt needs for acceptance, Inside, we need to be accepted. We need significance. We need security. Okay? So we have to find the only one that can give it to us is the one who created us, God. We got to go to God for those things, okay? But when we were growing up and instinctively started looking to fulfill those deep needs for acceptance, significance, security, well, up popped the world, man. And said, no problem, I'll show you how to get those acceptance and security and significance. I'll show you how to get that, right? So it led us to some false formulas. The world. I'm going to write this down. Performance plus accomplishments equals significance. That's what the world says. This is what the devil's telling you. Status plus recognition equals security. Uh, appearance, the way you look, plus admiration equals acceptance. Is that truth? Romans 12, 2. Do not, this is a command God's given to you. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you get the transformation by the renewing of your mind? It's by setting your mind on the word of God and not just listening to a video only, but also doing what I get you to do. Get your Bible, like right now, pause your video and look at that yourself. Please don't Google it. Please get your Bible in your hand, open it up to Romans 12 too, and read it yourself. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Set your mind on the word of God. Then, then, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good and pleasing and perfect will. You don't know God's will if you don't know God. And it's going to take time to know God because you got to go through his word. He's all in his word. He shows you in his word his will, his character his ways, his personality. And that takes time every day to sit some time down, get to know God. Then you will know what his will is. So, lust of the flesh. That's, that's what, these are, these are lies from the devil. Let me go back. The, these are lies right here. This is the world's formula that the world lives by. They don't perform good enough. And they don't accomplish something. They don't, they don't have no significance in this world. If you don't blow up big enough on the internet and ain't got a, a, you know, 50,000 subscribers, well, you, ain't, you, you feel like you ain't going to make it. You're not secure, man. If you don't wear the proper dresses and, and suits and ties and comb your hair and, and you ain't admired by the people, then you ain't accepted. That's lies, man. God stuck me out here on the internet just the way I am. Just the way I am. And he's using me. 
I keep my hair in a bun most of the time because I work myself hard, man. And I'm not out throwing my stuff all over the internet trying to blow up to be accepted. I'm just letting God use me. He grows the channel how he grows the channel. So these are lies right there that the world's telling you. But in the absence of a spiritual connection to God, what happens? We naturally fall for those lies. If you don't have a connection to God, you will fall for those lies. Or as Paul put it in Ephesians 2.2, 2, we naturally followed the ways of the world. We naturally followed the ways of the world. Because we're naturally born into sin. So we naturally follow the ways of the world. That's what we do. If we're not connected to the Spirit of God, the world has a kind of uh, one two punch right on one hand it makes us feel insignificant insecure and that nobody likes us then it offers us ways and promises you know ways that it promises us to fix that you know um, I don't even know what a fashionable brand is nowadays but dress in a fashionable brand get the best suits get the Louis Vuitton suits and then you'll fit in right Hang out with the elite, man. Don't go to the smaller channels that God is using like we are Jesus doers. Go to the big ones. The big ones. Because God's really there at the big ones that's teaching you junk. But you know what? Those ways don't work. They don't work. Because some of these big ones out here on YouTube is teaching you junk. Fear. Lots of fear. There's a channel right now that a lot of people is aware of. And he's big. And there's two of them in cahoots together. And they are teaching you fear, 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 fear. Yeah, yeah, but it's Bible. But it's teaching Bible. Yeah, he is. He is teaching the scary parts of the Bible to you. He's not helping you, though, understand how to endure and persevere through it and how to grow in the spirit to, to endure and persevere. That part's missing on purpose. Don't care how big and fancy they look, y'all. 1 John 2, 15 through 17. Turn there, please. Pause your video and turn there. Do not, another command, man, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anybody loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, doesn't come from the Father. But it comes from the world. The world and its desires pass away. They die. They vanish. But whoever does the will of God will live forever. Forever. Whoever does the will of God. And it's really not that many people, y'all. So there's three channels through which the world works. It's right here. One, two, three. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. And they are the same channels that Satan used when he tempted Eve. And again, when he appeared to Jesus in the wilderness and tempted him. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break these down for you. I did the first one for you. Lust of the flesh. You're going to write down in the comment section what it means to you. Lust of the flesh. I put acting on the world's lies. Knowing it and acting on the world's lies. You tell me what lust of the eyes and lust of pride, uh, pride of life. Wait till I get there to it. Lust of the flesh. We're going to look at the flesh as an, as an enemy in its own right, okay? But, but let's notice for right now that the lust of the flesh is linked to the world, okay? The more we buy into the world's lies and act on them, the more unhelpful patterns of thinking start becoming established in your mind. And then it becomes uh, default ways of behaving. Because it affects your mind first, then it will come out through your behavior. Your mind, y'all. What is that? It's your soul. Your mind, will, and emotion. And your behavior, what you really feel in your mind is going to come out through your spirit, through what you do, how you act, what you say, uh, how you look with your eyes, what you do with your hands if you flip the bird or, you know, whatever. It's going to come out. Through your behavior. Okay. 
um, lust of the eyes. Now, this is what I want you to tell me what this means to you in the comment section. The world shows me things it claims that will meet those legitimate needs for acceptance, significance, and security that God created me to have. It tries to get our attention with bright, new, and attractive things. You know, airbrush models make us feel like we have to look a certain way. And then we start getting all anxiety about getting older. We don't look like that anymore, right? So we start getting all anxious. Ultimately, they, they, they don't lead us into the bright future they promise, but into darkness and confusion. So how would you describe lust of eyes after what I just told you in the comment section? And now the pride of life. This is the temptation to boast about our life. The pride of life. It's where people are like, I do this, I've done that, I'm this, I'm that. So it's the temptation to boast about our life. Based on the lie that is possessions, what I have, I have this, I have that. What you've achieved, I've achieved this, I got this degree, I got that. Or connections that make us significant. You know, I know, I know the vice president. You know, I know senators. I know this, I know that, so I'm something special. When we feel the need to boast about what we have or our achievements or who we know, you know what we really show? Insecurity. We don't need a crutch, y'all, to bolster our self-image because we are now holy. Pleasing to God. And we are completely secure in Him. Okay. Another tactic the devil uses is he paints a complete but false picture of reality. Let me get my marker. Let me see what I got here. So this is tactic number one over here. And this is tactic number two over here. Let's see if you can see that. Nope. If you will. I just told you tactic number one. Now we're going to talk about tactic number two. Um, you know how some of you got grandkids or maybe you even adults have it, you know, whatever. You ever uh, put on one of those virtual reality headsets? Rather than simply watching a movie or, I don't know, a sporting event, you can have the impression that you're right there in it. Right there in it, right? One of the pioneers of virtual reality says that the goal is to make technology that's as real as life with none of the limitations, right? But of course, it won't be real. Do you understand? It will just feel real. Do you see what I'm saying? And that's essentially the second tactic of the world. To give you a distorted view of reality, but feed it to you as though it's the real thing. Do you understand? Let me turn this this way. Give you a distorted view of reality, but feed it to you like it's the real thing. In effect, it gives you a virtual reality headset, but you don't know you're wearing it. The virtual reality headset is called your worldview, okay? So just as we pick up things like, uh, like language from our environment, we also pick up beliefs and values and ways of behaving too. We are influenced by our family, by our schooling, by our friends, by our media, even by our churches. Without even realizing it, we develop a way of, of looking at reality that we believe is true. But if your worldview, y'all, is faulty, it's going to lead you to faulty judgments about 
what happens in your life, okay? And there are thousands of different worldviews. But we're going to look at the most common ones to understand how they work. So you got a non-Western worldview. This is supposed to be a non, a non-Western worldview. Okay. If you were brought up in Africa or, or uh, Eastern cultures, you may well have been absorbed the belief that the universe is controlled by a kind of universal power that runs through everything and by spirits of many types. If something bad happened to you, for example, let's say you, you suddenly became ill, then you would pass that bad experience through your virtual reality goggles and make sense of it, and you would probably begin to suspect that something might be manipulating this universal power or the spirits against you by cursing you or by somebody doing some kind of magic on you. That's how they, they are in African Eastern cultures. Just as you might turn to an electrician to sort out problems with power in your house, you probably turn to uh, a sort of a cosmic electrician, let's say, a shaman or, or a witch doctor to sort out the problems with this universal power, okay? And if this is how you see reality, chances are that you're going to become, you're going to be living in constant fear that someone else might have better control of the powers that you might, you know, uh, somehow unwittingly upset a spirit that would turn against you. In other words, if that's your culture, your belief in this type of the world, you're going to believe that, oh, somebody's putting a curse on me. This is a curse. So you go to a witch doctor and then you're going to live in fear. If I make this witch doctor mad, it's going to be a bigger curse and curse and curse. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? Okay, that, that's one worldview right there. Then you've got the Western worldview. That's a non-Western. Then you have the Western. The Western worldview, most people brought up in the West, they don't turn to a witch doctor if things you know, start to go wrong. Instead, we tend to look for logical reasons and try to fix the problem, right? That's because we've been fed uh, a different view of reality by the world. It's a worldview that tells us that what is real can only be known through scientific methods. So if we're ill, we turn to a doctor who will use scientific methods to try to make us better, right? In this worldview, it's still just about, it's still just about okay, I guess, to believe in God and other supernatural things, but we come to believe that they have no real bearing on our daily life. It's generally a thought. What I mean is that we can uh, leave spiritual questions out of our children's education without losing anything that really matters. Someone said, I believe in God, but I'm a practicing atheist. And that would be true of many. And that's what I mean. Just because you believe in God in this worldview right here don't mean you are turning to God. A lot of the Western people believe in God, but they don't turn and trust God. They trust science. You understand? Just because you believe. So that's why I try to tell you. Jesus said, my people don't know, to, don't know what it means to believe. These people believe there's a God. They really do. But they don't live for him. They don't trust him. They don't try to get to know him on a personal level. They don't honor him and they certainly don't obey him. They don't know what it means to believe and they truly don't. Okay. Then you have the postmodern world view. Okay. But culture is always changing and another worldview, usually called the postmodern worldview, that's been emerging in the West in recent decades, right? Which is something of a, a reaction against past generations, a reliance on scientists and experts. After all, what experts say 
has all too often turned out to be wrong. Whereas previous generations saw truth as something revealed by God or discovered by science, increasingly we test whether an idea is valid or, or not purely on the basis of our own personal experience. If it feels good to me, it's okay, in other words. I'll tell you, politicians, they can say what they want. They can say what they, they can say what people want to hear. Many preachers today, y'all, in the church can say what they know you want to hear. Even if it flies in the face of facts and, and, and gets a strong following, whatever they say it for, they can say what you want to hear just to, just to get you to follow them. And people do. And they do. Groups on social media promote even the, the most outlandish views and members reinforce each other's beliefs. That is why Christians are under pressure to agree that all religions are equally true today. You know, you got the defender of the king that just rose to power, defender of the faiths. For example, saying that we respect the right of other people to different beliefs and that we are happy to dialogue with them is, is no longer enough, okay? There is a pressure, you understand this, y'all, there is a pressure, I'm trying to tell you, to agree that their beliefs are just as true as yours. That's a postmodern worldview. You got these younger Christians, which is why, thank God, God has us starting a junior class for our teenagers, or they're going to be lost. Younger Christians are happy to say that Jesus is their truth, but they hesitate to go any further and talk about him as the truth. This has uh, led to what you might want to call extreme tolerance, where practically any behavior is acceptable. And you see the behaviors that the world is pumping out now. Tran this, tran that, everything under the sun, everything, rainbows flying everywhere. It is all acceptable. They stole the rainbow from God. But it's all acceptable, right? In fact, the only thing that is seen as wrong is saying what someone else is doing is wrong. The bottom line, y'all, is that people are increasingly absorbing into their worldview a belief that there is no real, solid, undergirding truth. That is the postmodern worldview. That there is no truth. The truth is whatever you want it to be. Do what thou wilt, in other words. Let's put it that way. Let's put it here. Do what thou wilt. That's the worldview the postmodern has. Not do whatever the Lord says. Do what thou wilt. Do what makes you feel good. That's the worldview that's going on right now around us. Then you have this worldview. Biblical. At the biblical worldview that truth does exist so which worldview appears right y'all out of the non-western worldview the western worldview the postmodern worldview which one of those is right which one of these three is right put it in the comment section hopefully you said none of them none of them are right if we were to take that virtual reality headset off and get rid of the values and beliefs that our own particular culture instilled in us, what would the world actually look like? Think about that. What would the world look like? The Bible claims to be God's revelation of reality to the people that he created. So if that's right, then taking off that headset would mean that what we would see 
would correspond exactly to what the Bible tells us. Because the Bible warned us about everything we see today. Didn't it? Yes, it did. That what the Bible says is how it really is. What the Bible tells you is the way it is. Is the way it really is. Because we're seeing all that Jesus said in John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So, are we saying that, that only one view of reality can be right? Isn't that a little bit, well, intolerant, so you might say? Well, I want you to consider the most important question facing everybody in the world. Think about this question. I'm going to write it down for you. Think about this question. What makes your worldview, what makes your view right, Kim? Think about this question. All these right here. Think about this question. What happens to me when I die? Think about all them other worldviews and think about that question. Now, Hinduism... To answer that question, Hinduism teaches that when a soul dies, it is reincarnated in another form. Christianity teaches that souls spend eternity in either heaven or hell. Spiritists think uh, we float around as ghosts. <laughs> Amen. Atheists believe that we have no soul and that when we die, our existence just simply ends. Can all those things be true at the same time, y'all? To put it another way, does what you believe will happen when you die make any difference to what will actually happen? Does what you believe about it make any difference to what is actually going to happen? Or will the same thing happen to everyone when they die? regardless of what they believe before this death event. Well, certainly if Hindus are right, then we'll all be reincarnated, right? If Christians are right, then we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. If atheists are right, all of our existence is going to come to an end. Just, just stop. And if those spiritists are right, then we're all going to float around as ghosts. But they simply cannot all be true at the same time. So it's clear that there is such a thing as real truth that exists whatever individuals may choose to believe. Okay? Now, Jesus said again, what is the truth? You want to know the truth? All these want to know the truth. What is the truth? I am the truth, the life, and the way, and nobody comes to the Father but through me. That is the truth, okay? So, we're going to go into you understanding that there is the world's ways, there is the, 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 the uh, devil's ways, there's, all the, there's the world's ways, there's the spirit ways, okay? Now, I'm going to give you tactic number three. I had to make sure I wasn't running out of storage room. I was getting ready to wrap it up and redo another video, but I think I can keep going because I got to do tactic number three. Now, tactic number three, which is... Uh, this is number three. Not replacing core beliefs. Let me make sure you can see that. Sure. Yeah, you can see that. Let's see if we can go down like this. Uh, not replacing core beliefs. All of us today 
were raised wearing a virtual reality headset of one kind or another. It's our uh, original, original worldview. But it's crucial to understand that these headsets give us a distorted view of, of a reality. So the third tactic of the world is to get us to add our Christian beliefs to our existing uh, worldview rather than replace the existing worldview so that our core beliefs remain the same. Gold leaf is real gold that is beaten until it is 200 times thinner than a human hair. Then it is applied to books or to ornaments or buildings or whatever. And sometimes it's applied to food. Something that is covered in gold leaf looks as though it's made from solid gold, but it's actually just a thin covering, right? So imagine your Christian beliefs as a beautiful golden ornament. Think about it. If we were to uh, take a saw and cut it in half, what would you see inside of it? Would it be solid gold all the way through? Or would there just be a thin layer of gold with some cheap and nasty metal on the inside? Think about that for just a minute. So how are those brought up in the West affected by the Western worldview in which affect denies the reality of the spiritual world. It encourages us to live our lives and exercise our ministries as if the spiritual world didn't exist. You understand? When something goes horribly wrong in our lives, you know what a lot of Christians do? They blame God. Many Christians blame God, y'all. Because influenced by the Western worldview, they leave Satan out of the equation who the Bible says is a thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy in Luke, no, John, John 10.10. 10. They don't want to blame the devil. They want to blame God, a Christian I'm talking about. They blame God real quick. What about when someone has a mental or psychological problem? The medical profession, influenced by the Western worldview, well, they tend to ignore the reality of the spiritual world, and they don't even acknowledge the possibility that an issue may have a spiritual cause. Oh, your child has schizophrenia. The whole time it'd be a demon possession. We are whole people, y'all. We are whole people. We are spirit, we are soul, and we are body. And we need to take into account both the natural world and the spiritual world. If you go back through last week's videos, we did it all week about the spirit against the flesh. The natural world against the spiritual world. You got to take that account. We say we believe the Bible, but our decisions are made on the basis of what we think rather than on what God is saying. We say we believe in the power of prayer, but do our actions really demonstrate that we believe that we can sort out our lives ourselves and use you know, prayer as a last resort? That's what the world teaches. I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to think about it. I'm going to ask you this right here. <clears throat> Why are you a Christian? Think about that. Pause your video and think about that. Why? Why are you a Christian? Because Christians who are still operating according to their old worldview, well, you might have said something like this. I believe because it seems to work or uh, I feel it's true in my experience or I sincerely believe it, that it's true for me. But what happens, y'all, when it no longer seems to work? 
or when it doesn't feel true anymore or when another attractive belief system comes along, what happens then? So I'll tell you something. We're going to go deeper. I'm going to do the, after I'm done with this, I'm going to put out the next video that you are in a battle. I'm going to lay the battleground out for you. And you understand where you're at because each of us needs to come to a point where we realize that what the world has caused us to believe is so contrary to what is really true that we make a conscious decision to throw that away. Throw it away. We need to make a conscious choice, church, to believe what the Bible says. To make the word of God our core belief system. Not just something we add on like a like a coating of gold leaf to a to a fully belief system. James 1 8. James 1 8. If we don't, it will lead us to compromise and we will be double-minded and unstable in all of our ways. Okay? Now, I'm going to go into, I'm going to let this upload because I know it's, I got to do it this way because we're getting bad storms tonight. I'm 46 minutes into it. So um, this is just to understand, like, like a root of what I'm trying to teach you here. Just a root so you understand. But I'm going to really bust the lesson out now. So I'm going to erase this off the board. I'm going to let this upload and be looked for the next video called This Is Your Battle. That's what I'm going to call it. This is your battle. All right. Look for that. And that will be maybe to, and I put it out today, but it's really for tomorrow because I may not be able to put a video out tomorrow because we lose power. So anyway, just, just keep up here, y'all. And as soon as I get power back on, boom, I'll be right back at it. All right. I want to thank those of you. That's um, giving your tithes and offerings here and helping support our ministry so we can grow and continue to do what we've got God to do. We can grow. We grow. Grow in the kingdom. Help more people, which is what we do do. And Africa, every month. Don't forget about them. Africa. Got to help them too. Okay? You do that in the description below. Click on the video right in the description of the title. It'll take you there. Or you can see how on JesusDoers.com. And thank those of you that's still helping Igor to get over here. We got a lot to do yet. The lawyer up in the price, <clears throat> okay? And we got about 10000 bucks we have to put into his room and bathroom to build it down here. And uh, so we got a lot to do. So thank you all for helping us or we, we, wouldn't be, we probably couldn't get it done. But thank you guys for helping us. Uh, that fundraiser is on the website, JesusDoers.com. And that's different than your tithes and offerings, y'all. That's something different. Fundraiser is a fundraiser. The Bible, Jesus said... Give God what belongs to God. That's your tithes and offerings in the description. And give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. In other words, give God what belongs to God and give Igor what belongs to Igor. They're separate. Don't get them confused, y'all, because things start getting all confused and nobody knows what's going where or what. And... No, just keep it in order, y'all. Thank those of you that's doing so and helping us out, y'all. And it's, I think we're about, let's see. Um, we've got, we, we end up, we've got it to about 4,000 right now. So we need about eight more gram. Yeah. So thank y'all that's helping with that. And I'm going to keep it up there until maybe some people are just going to continue to give every month till we get it. Thank y'all. That's what I'm trying to say. And me, Igor Shanoa, we're here. We're here to help you every day. And we thank you guys so, so much for helping with God's kingdom and with what God is doing. Thank you guys so much. God bless you. Let me go make the other video. In Jesus' name, understand this. Be looking for the next video, that it's your battle.